our Profis Farmers. My name is Brenda Candiero and today I'm going to talk to you about egg production on a small scale. So I've got uh, with me today about 470 uh, layers at 34 weeks and I'm just going to take you through um, egg production and bed management, housing management and I just want to remind you today that this is not something new but it's something that we've been teaching uh, on PowerPoint and all in our live trainings. But again, I thought that today it would make more sense for me to actually come on a farm and I talk to you whilst you are looking at the chickens. I'm going to talk uh, about the housing structure. So remember, with layers, uh, with egg production, there are two different types. The first one uh, is battery cages, where you've seen uh, layers pegged in tires uh, in cages going up and there's also what we call a deep litter system which is a system that I will show you today. Uh, there's, there are differences between the two but the end result is the same and the end result is that we want to have maximum egg production and we want our flock to perform well so that we, not, we do not run uh, into losses. So uh, the first thing that I will talk to you about uh, wherever, whether it's a broiler farm or a pig farm or a layer farm, the most important thing is biosecurity. And this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you've got 10 chickens or a thousand chickens or 50,000 chickens. Biosecurity, we talk of pre uh, preventing diseases or protecting the lives of our birds. So the first thing that we need to see every time we get to a farm is what we call a foot dip or if you are allowing vehicles to get to your chicken place we expect to see a wheel dip and in this wheel dip uh, this is where we put our disinfectant and everyone who's coming from wherever even the workers if, as they come in um, into the chicken house we want them first to disinfect their shoes right we normally recommend that let your work suits your gum boots be at the chicken houses so that you wear them and they are clean they are disinfected right and as you come in now as you're getting into the into the chicken house by the entrance we expect to see a foot dip you dip your shoes there and in there it's very important to note that number one the dilution is, is correct. So if you put more water and less chemical, it's not going to be effective. So, and then again, we also don't want the water to get very dirty. So we always recommend that besides your foot dip, you have like a dish or another dip with just clean water for you to take off all the soil and everything. Because what happens in the foot dip is that if it becomes too dirty, then it's going to reduce the effectiveness um, of our chemical. So make sure that you keep your foot deep clean all the time, right? We also want you uh, to have like a hand sanitizer because remember, you're going to be handling the feeders, you're going to be handling the drinkers, even the chickens themselves, you're going to be picking eggs. Maybe you will 10 liter uh, in the liter that is in the nesting boxes. So make sure that your hands are sanitized and they are clean before you get into the chicken house. And then another thing that we also need to look at is visitors. And we need to, as much as we can, minimize people who are just coming to visit our birds, just to check on them, to see how we are doing, to, to count the eggs that we are picking. Uh, so we don't want unnecessary visits from people because you don't know where they are coming from and you don't know what they are bringing. And they are a high risk in that they may carry pathogens, they may carry bacteria and bring it to your flock. And when they leave, after two or three weeks, you're starting to get sick beds and now you don't know where it's coming from. So in as much as you would want people to see how good you are doing, it's better to take photos and show them rather than having people coming to visit you unnecessarily unless they are coming to, to give take advice or they're coming to work here otherwise please minimize visitors as much as you can right and now when it comes to uh, the housing or the housing structure this is uh, where we're keeping our chickens this is where the production 
um, is happening. We've got uh, our laying nests in there. We've got the birds and the feeding and the drinking. Everything is happening in this house. And uh, where I am today, what they've done is they've got basically like where the birds go and sleep and they can lay eggs and then in the afternoon they are free to move in and out so as you can see uh they've got like a shed in front right and then at the back it's closed up and they've got their laying uh boxes there as well as some of the feeders because we don't want to restrict these beds so we want them to be moving about freely so the first important thing that we need to look at uh, for housing is stocking density and when we talk of stocking density we are saying how many beds are we putting per square meter right and I remember we always say that for broilers uh, we always talk about 10 beds per square meter or maybe up to 12 beds per square meter in winter but when we are talking about uh, these uh, hens we reduce the stocking density to about six or seven maximum beds per square meter. So this means that at every square meter, we are expecting to find seven or less beds, right? This is what, um, it's because when you are building your house and you calculate at seven beds per square meter, you are also giving room or you're giving space to your feeders, to your nesting boxes, and to, to your drinkers. And I will show you that with these beds, they've got a natural behavior that they always want to exercise on a daily basis. So you also need to have patching, they need to climb up, they need to fly around a little bit, and it's allowed so that we maintain the bed welfare, right? So ventilation, number one, is very important, right? We don't want to close up our birds because remember, as they are eating and as droppings are coming out, they, the droppings will have ammonia and all other gases. They are also breathing out uh, carbon dioxide. And all these gases, we need them to go out. So we don't want to keep bird gases inside, right? And they also breathe in oxygen, just like us. So we also want fresh air to come in. I love this place because it's, it's surrounded by trees. So I would assume that we've got very nice and clean oxygen uh, around this place. And if we close up the house, it means we can't have that oxygen getting in. And oxygen is very important uh, for, for the metabolism of these beds. If oxygen is limited, even our egg production will go down. So remember that when we are talking of layers, when we are talking of egg production, what we want at the end of the day is for each hen to give us an egg at least about 27 hours. So this is what we want and we must make sure that everything that we are doing, we are going towards our goal. And then the other thing that we also need to consider when we are constructing our house is the light, right? We need light inside. Remember that uh, from our previous um, our tra life trainings, we've always repeatedly say that lighting stimulates egg production. So if there is darkness in the house, it means that the egg is not going to be produced. So make sure that you've got enough or adequate light getting in. And we always talk about um, at, uh, at least 16 hours of light per day so like at 34 35 weeks like these birds they need about 16 hours a day of light which means that in winter when it the sun sets um, around five it means you actually have to provide lighting either you use uh, electricity or you can use solar lights but you need to make sure that they are getting adequate lighting to stimulate egg production And then one of the most important um, aspects of layer production or egg production is feeding and drinking, right? And let me just take you back to our feeding uh, uh, regime at ProFeeds for layers. So we've got a five phase feeding, right? And we start with the chick starter, which is fed from day old to eight weeks. 
and then we go to the layer developer which is like a grower and this is also important because it develops the beds it develops the organs as they prepare for egg production and we feed the layer developer from eight weeks to about to 16 weeks and then we've got another feed as before we step into the production feeds we've got a pre-lay and a pre-lay is uh, a feed that is also given uh, to the layers from 16 weeks until you get to 5% production. So by 5% production, I, I, I mean when you've got 100 beds, when you start to pick five eggs a day for about three consecutive days, then you know you have reached your 5% production. And when this happens, now you move on to layer phase one, which is a production feed. We feed layer phase one from 5% production up until 45 weeks. And then from 45 weeks all the way until you cull your beds or you get rid of them, you move on to layer phase two. So layer phase one and layer phase two both are production feeds but layer phase two has got a higher calcium because you will see that as the beds get older the shells of the eggs they start to soften and the phase two will correct that softness and uh, breaking of shells so it will be low spec as much as far as protein is concerned but as far as the calcium is concerned it's got higher so if you've got beds that are 72 weeks old and you continue to feed them phase one, you may get the eggs, but the shells will not be as strong. So we actually recommend you to move with the phases as we recommend. So like today in this uh, farm, they've got uh, these beds at 34 weeks and they are still feeding layer phase one, right? And um, the most important thing to note is that we are not feeding a pellet this is a mesh or in the form of a meal and uh, as you will see it's got like grains uh, crushed maize which is very important for the gizzard uh, for the gizzards of these birds and when it comes to feeding with layers we do not especially at production we do not recommend ad lib feeding ad lib feeding is whereby you come in the morning and you fill your feeders and you don't allow the feed to run out. You keep on chopping and they keep on eating. Now, when we are talking about these, uh, these layers, one, we don't want to underfeed them. And number two, we don't want to overfeed them. We just want to give them just the correct amount of feed. And with our profits layer, uh, feed we recommend that each bed uh, gets 110 grams per day of feed so you just calculate like here they've got about uh, 470 beds so that's 470 times 110 grams and it's about 51.7 kgs per day right so this is what they're supposed to give per day if you give less you might only maintain the birds, but you will not get the egg. If you feed more, you will overfeed. The birds will start to have uh, fat around the oviducts and you start to get uh, eggs breaking inside. And sometimes they actually stop laying when they are overweight. So we, you need to take into consideration that with layers, it's always, always the recommended feed per day. And now you'll find that with these birds, they can get bored. If you feed them in the morning and they finish their feed and then uh, they've got nothing to do, they start to peck each other, they start to run around, they start to do all sorts of things. So we normally recommend that you do what we call split feeding, whereby you feed half. Remember for these birds, I said 51.7, so let's call it 52. 52 kgs per day so you are doing half the feed in the morning so let's say around seven you come and you feed 20 uh, 26 kgs and you just divide um, the feed uh, depending on the number of feeders that you have we recommend that you have more speed feeding space so that there is no pressure 
when it comes to eating, there's no bullying. So your feeding space must be adequate, right? And then you feed the other half, let's say at 3 p.m. This will allow them to have feed all the time. But on our side, we are not overfeeding. So please make sure that you can, we, we, we really recommend split feeding. And there are some people who do it three times a day. So whatever suits you, but just make sure that you are not exceeding the recommended um, uh, feeding quantities. Right, and then um, when it comes to drinking, right, remember water is also as important as the feed. And we always tell you and teach you that when you give 10 grams of feed, give the uh, two times um, the amount uh, of water. So 10 grams of feed, at least your chicken must be consuming about 20 mils uh, of, of water. So water is very important. And again, I will repeat that water availability is one thing and water quality is also another thing. It depends where you're getting your water from. If you don't trust your source, we recommend that you actually uh, put chemicals in the water. You can put chlorine tablets so that you kill all pathogens because water, dirty water, uh, is a big risk to your flock and you end up treating diseases just because the water was not clean. So we recommend that you clean. If you've got nipple drinkers, clean them. If you've got uh, this type of bell drinkers, clean them every morning before you refill with water so that there are no pathogens. But like uh, in this season, it's very hot and we want to avoid heat stress. So your birds need to be drinking as much water as they can so that they don't get dehydrated and they, don't, uh, they are not heat stressed. So many people who normally call us complaining that they've got birds at 30 weeks but they are still not laying eggs. What is the problem? Is it your feed? Is it, uh, are they sick or what? So there are so many factors uh, that can cause your birds not to lay eggs, right? And the first thing that I want to show you here, as you're looking at this beautiful girl that I'm holding, um, the first thing that we need to look at is the comb, right? This thing. And with the comb, it, to show that the hen is mature and is ready to lay an egg. It must be big and bright red. As you can see this, and even as you can look around here, you see that almost all the combs are mature, they are bright red and they are nice, right? And so this is a sign that this chicken is actually ma mature and it can lay an egg, right? The second thing, that I will want to show you, but I don't know if you can see, is there is what we call a pubic bone. And these are two bones in between the legs. And you will notice that when the birds are still smaller, it's still a bit closed and it opens with age. So you must be able to put at least three or four fingers in between, uh, in between the, the pubic bones. And this is where the egg comes out. And if it's not wide enough, it means that hen is not ready uh, to lay eggs. And then when you get your point of lay at 18 weeks, another important thing that you also need to look at is the weight of the birds. So we expect that for a bird to start laying, it should be uh, with an average weight of 1.4 kgs. So if you've got a 1 kg bird, it's surely not going to lay. And we also don't want to have these girls above uh, 2 kgs because now they are on the other side of the scale. They are now too heavy and they will not be uh, as productive, right? And another thing, that might uh, also um, hinder your layers from laying eggs is stress. And stress in these beds is something very important. And if we do not manage stress in layer beds, they will stop laying. And layers uh, uh, can get stressed with anything, really. They can get stressed from noise, from movement. Let's say there's a dog that runs around here, they panic and they are stressed. If it rains so hard and there's a hailstorm and the noise from the hailstorm, um, it can also cause the birds to get stressed. And sometimes uh, we've seen that even noise from people uh, 
anything that they are not used, it can actually stress them. Like I, I, I can tell you that if they're watching me with the camera and I'm talking all the way, it might stress them as well. So layers do not want stressful conditions. And we normally recommend that when you think that your layers or your beds are, are stressed, please just provide a, a stress pack or a mineral and vitamin pack into the water for three to four days and this should uh, actually cause them to eat. Because remember, when they are stressed, they stop eating or they eat less. And when they eat less, now you don't get that egg. So you need to manage stress so that your birds are, are okay and they are happy. We, I also spoke about uh, birds welfare with layers. You need to allow them to show their natural behavior. So things like perching, uh, pecking, they like it. It's also, very, it's also a very good habit to throw in greens here and there. Some people use lucerne, some throw vegetables, anything that you can so that you keep them busy. If you don't do that, they will start pecking each other. And there is um, a, a, a disorder in behavior that can come that is called cannibalism. Cannibalism is whereby the chickens start to peck on each other until they bleed, until they kill each other. And once that behavior starts in your chicken run, it is very viral and it is very difficult to stop. So for you to avoid cannibalism, manage the stress and make sure that your birds are happy all the time. Behind me, this is our factory, right? This is where the herns come to lay their eggs. And we also uh, encourage you that you have enough nesting boxes. And we normally recommend uh, for one nesting box, one nesting boxes is for five birds, right? So you calculate the number of birds that you have for you to not uh, the number of nest boxes that you want. And as you can see, they've used wood here and they always put hay inside, right? I want to talk about one, uh, about um, something very important on managing nesting boxes and this is hygiene, right? This is where the eggs are laid and you take them and then you are taking them off to the market. So number one, you must make sure that the place is clean. Because remember, when the hen sits in here to lay an egg, the inside of the chicken is actually coming out with the egg. And at times, this inside of the chicken will be in contact with the surface. So if this is not clean, it means that as now the ovita goes back, it's going to carry with it uh, bacteria, viruses and all sorts, and then your birds will get sick. So it's very important to make sure that it's very clean and it's uh, of very good uh, hygiene. And also it helps that then when the egg is laid, you can look at this egg, it's very nice it's, and there's no need for, for cleaning this because it's already very clean. So if you've got dirty nesting boxes, you will get dirty eggs. And I'm sure customers will run away from you when you are selling them dirty eggs. So make sure that your hygiene is fine because if it's not, then this is a high risk for contamination of the eggs and even the chicken organs and the chickens will get sick. Okay, so we are here now and this is where the joy of egg production is, where you actually now have picked the eggs and they're ready for the market. And I'm sure you can see these crates are, are empty because uh, when we came in here, the eggs were being taken to the market. But on a daily basis, uh, out of their 470, they're picking about 15 to 16 crates of eggs a day, which is not bad, which is okay. So um, when we talk of egg storage, let's say you're picking your eggs and you're storing them. We always want the eggs to be in a cool, dry place. So we don't want any moisture because it will cause the eggs to go bad very quickly. So the place must be dry and the place must, uh, must also be cool, right? And then I think when you are selling off your eggs, this is now like a marketing tip, right? But we don't, I wouldn't want to come to your place and I buy a crate of 30 eggs and they are five are very big, three are very small 
and and they're all mixed in the in the in the tray so we always encourage and recommend that you grate your eggs according to their size so you have the small you have the standard if you are getting the jumbos the whatever but just sort them out according to their sizes right and then i'm just going to show you quickly here um the quality of the egg so when we look at the quality of the egg normally we're looking at how the yolk is looking we don't want an egg when you break it and the yolk is ru running away from the egg white they must stay uh intact and this shows that the egg is fresh and it's of good quality and then the other thing that we know people are concerned about is the yolk color and i want you to note that yolk color has nothing to do with the uh, nutritional value of the egg but i know with with people some prefer it's more yellow or some prefer an orange yolk so it varies so you just um you have to be, um, you must be able to cater the needs of your market. But when you are feeding with profits, we always say, so we use this, I'll show you this. I call this, um, it's, it's, it's a color fan, a, a yolk color fan, right? And it's got different, these are all yellows, but you can see that the intensity of the yellow is very different. So it starts off, it's almost whitish, and it gets all the way to a deep orange and on this you've got numbers so it ranges from one all the way to 14. so what we're basically doing here is i want to measure the egg yolk of this egg right the color of this egg right so what you do is you will need uh, a white base right so that you can actually see so when you break it like that and as i was telling you you can see it's intact, the yolk and the egg white, the abumen, they are all intact, they are both intact, right? So you take your fan and you're just trying to see and to match the fan with the yolk. So you can see it's not even there and I'll go all the way to eight, right? Right. And I think this is around 11. So it's 11 on the DSM um, York color fan. And don't worry about getting this. You don't need this. I'm sure with your eyes, you can tell and you can see. But I will tell you that if you are feeding on profits, we make sure that you are getting a good yellow that will be attractive uh, to, to, to many people who are buying your eggs. So uh, this is... Uh, um number 11 uh on this and it's a very good yellow right so you'll find that if you are now giving lucerne extra vegetables to your birds you can go deeper and it can even get up to 12 13 and now it will be turning um towards the orange um color of your yolk all right uh so i think that's all about it uh from us today and I do hope that this is going to help you. Even we're going to save this on our Facebook page, on our website, so you can revisit and you uh, get to learn more about egg production. But remember that if you've got any questions on leg, layer production, egg production, please don't, do get in touch with us. Also remember that we are selling point of lay beds at profits. You just go and book at $8 uh, per bed and you get your point of lay, you get your feed and you are good to start on. So just in summary, let me just remind you that if you want to get it right for your egg production, make sure that stocking density is fine make sure that you are feeding all right uh, with uh, and also make sure that you've got enough lighting in the chicken houses and last but not least try as much as you can to minimize stress in your flock from me brenda candiero and the profits tech team i say happy egg production